Oh, get ready, the evening shadows fall. Don't you hear the Eliezer call? There's gonna be a wedding, our joy shall soon begin. When the camel train comes in. Thank you for your support of Honest News Network. I'm not sure if you folks have ever heard of Blue Letter Bible, but uh, we've decided that we're going to change our format and we're going to start using this online uh, tool. Uh, the reason why we're going to do this is because this allows us to provide you with a link so that you can actually go and um, print the scriptures for the lesson. Um, also allows you to actually use the, the Bible study tools that are here. They're free. Um, but uh, what I like about this, this tool is, uh, is that it allows you to compare scriptures. So you can use this tool. It's called the Multiverse Retrieval Tool. And it allows you to put as many references as you want to, and they can, you can then compare them side by side. And so what you end up coming up with is something like this. So let me show you what it will actually look like. So this is this is what the study is going to look like going forward, and basically what we do is we just um, are basically cropping out the uh, the frame of the of the website and bringing in just the scriptures, but we'll provide you with a link so that you can have um, access to these. Uh, verses that we've used in the lesson so you don't have to depend or on a on a video um, to be able to study this out also what we're going to be doing also is providing you with the link um, on a lot of messages we'll provide you with a link maybe the night before in the community section so that you can actually uh, begin studying these verses out yourself and get familiar with them before we uh, share the lesson. Um, so that, that will help as well. The other thing is I want to show you is if you look at the top here, you'll see that, let me see if I can show you with a different view. You'll see here that at the top, you have the option uh, let me see. You can't see it now. For some reason, it's not showing up. But at the top here... Uh, okay, there it is. So at the top here, you got the option to print. So you can print out the lesson. And that way you have it on print versus having to uh, use a... Um, having to use a... Uh, A video or being able to be strapped to the video or to your uh, mobile phone that that gives you a whole lot more room a lot more freedom um, it's a whole lot better looking at a piece of paper with scriptures than it is looking at your computer screen or your mobile phone all the time but I like this uh, this tool because the blue letter Bible allows you to uh, study the Bible in a way that you don't have um, the access to do that um, in a lot of other applications. So you just you just go to the website and you take a look yourself, see what is there and what you could use, um, and I think it'll be a blessing to you. So we're going to go ahead and get into the lesson. And uh, let me see here if I can get back to my lesson. 
Okay, we're going to be looking at the book of Exodus to begin with in this lesson. And I, I want to read the whole chapter of uh, chapter 12 of Exodus because I want God's people to hear uh, the actual Exodus of the children of Israel coming out of Egypt. I, I don't think God's people really have really taken the time to read this chapter and really understand what happened and how God brought them out. And it's so important to understand the condition of Israel and the actual night they were coming out of Egypt, how they left, is, they left Egypt in haste. And it's so important to understand this because there seems to be such a lukewarmness in the church today, and I don't think the church understands the urgency of the hour. And so this is going to be a lesson about awakening God's people. Uh, the Lord awakens his beloved is the title of the message. And so uh, let's open in prayer before we get into the lesson. And, and again, before I pray, I just want to remind you there will be a link to this uh, so you can go and print this up or study it for yourself in the description of the uh, video. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for your love and your mercy, your goodness, your kindness to us. We thank you, God, for this opportunity, Lord, to share your word with your people. We pray, Lord, that your people will gain a greater desire, Lord, for studying your word and understanding the truth, that it's not just, just another story or just another book, Lord, but we're we're actually studying the Word of God, the truth, the Holy Scriptures, and the very inspired Scriptures that were inspired of your Spirit. We pray, Lord, that your people will take the time to study your Word, Lord. We pray that you bless and anoint as we minister your Word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. The Lord awakens his beloved. We begin with Exodus, Exodus, the 12th chapter, beginning with verse 1. <clears throat> and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So really, this is actually a new beginning for Israel. Are you listening? This is a new beginning, just like you and I, when we get saved, when, when we come to the knowledge of the truth. It's a new beginning for us, right? Same thing for Israel. When they came out of Egypt, this was a new beginning for them. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house, take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Are you listening, folks? Now, this is going to take a little bit for us to get used to because we're used to using a different format. So please bear with us. But I do want you to recognize here that this lamb is being killed. Very important to understand. 
This lamb is being killed. All right, so <clears throat> might have to break this up into verses. It's difficult to see it as you. Uh, let's see. Wow, this is a big difference in looking at one verse at a time. And you shall keep it until the 14th day of the month and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel. Let me do it this way. Shall kill it in the evening. Let's do that. And you shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts of the upper door, the post of the house, wherein you shall eat it. All right? And they shall eat of the flesh in that night, roast it with fire and unleavened bread. And with bitter herbs, they shall eat of it. I see we're going to have to do this differently. This is getting this a little bit complicated. It's hard to see these verses. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden. And what that means, sodden, means don't boil the meat. It's not to be boiled. This meat was to be roasted with fire. But roast it with fire, his head, with his legs, and with the puritans thereof. And you shall eat nothing of it, remain until the morning. You shall eat, excuse me, and you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. That's so important to understand when you understand that this is the Lord's Passover. So not only are they going to take the blood from this lamb and strike the doorposts of the house, but they're also going to eat of the, of the meat, right, of the flesh. This is a type of, Jesus said, lest you drink of my blood and eat of my flesh. You have no life in you, right? And so not, it's, it's important to understand the blood on the doorpost having to do with... Um, the Passover or having to do with atonement, but then they had to eat of the of the actual lamb. Okay? And that's what we're doing right now. We're eating of the lamb. We're we're studying the word, right? And you shall eat of it with your loins girded. Now this is what I want you to see. This is so important to see this. And thus shall you eat it with your loins girded with your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand. Now, did you notice, folks, how he wanted them to eat this Passover? Let's take a look at this. This is important to our lesson of the Lord awakening his beloved. Thus shall you eat it, with your loins girded and your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand, you shall eat it in haste. Did you hear that? You shall eat it in haste. And that word haste in the Hebrew is flight. Flight. Are you listening? God considered the deliverance of Israel out of Egypt as a flight. And you're going to see in the scripture, that's exactly what it is. Amen? So remember, this word haste means flight. So he wants them to leave Egypt in haste. They shouldn't be lukewarm. They shouldn't just be laying around, sitting around. No. He wants them on their feet, standing with their sandals on their feet, right? With their staffs in their hands, and he wants them to eat the Passover in that fashion. 
Do you see the urgency here, folks? Remember, this is the night, the very night that they are going to be delivered out of Egypt. Okay? And so God does not want them just sitting around lazily, right? Lukewarm, just kind of hanging around. No. This is very urgent, very serious. And this was done in such haste that there was no time to put leaven in the bread. And that's where the Feast of Unleavened Bread comes from. They did not have time to put leaven in the bread. Are you listening? He says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both man and beast, And against all gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. Are you seeing that? It's going to execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be unto you for a sign or a token upon your houses where you are. Catch that. The blood shall be unto you for a token upon the houses where you are. Is the blood applied, brothers and sisters? Amen. Do you have the blood of Jesus applied to your life? He says, when I shall see the blood, when I shall see the blood, I will pass over you. Oh, blessed be his name. I will pass over you when I see the blood. And the plague shall be, not be upon you to destroy you. Do you see how the blood of Jesus protects us from God's own wrath, from his own judgment? Now, when I smite the land of Egypt... So God's going to protect his people when he smites the land of Egypt with his judgment. When he sees the blood, he he says, it's not going to harm you. The death angel's not going to harm you. Are you listening? And this day shall be unto you for memorial. and You shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. And that's the feast of unleavened bread. Amen. Praise the Lord. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. And what he means is forever in their generations. How many know God does not expect you and I to keep the feast of unleavened bread in the natural? Paul the Apostle spoke about keeping the feast of un, uh, uh, keeping the feast without leaven. That's a spiritual application. Amen? So, seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away the leaven out of your houses. Are you listening? No leaven. For whosoever eateth the leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. Do you see how serious a matter the leaven is, brothers and sisters? So important to understand this. And in the first day, there shall be a holy convocation. And in the seventh day, there shall be a holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done for you. You shall observe the feast of unleavened bread that took place, folks. The feast of unleavened bread took place at the Passover. Are you listening? Now, I want to skip down here. I want to skip down. 
and I want you to see the firstborn were to be the Lord's. Are you listening? And Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families, and kill the Passover. Okay? Every family. Every family. So important. So important. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop. He's telling them how they're going to put that, that blood on the doors. How many know the hyssop's a type of faith? How do, you, how do you apply the blood of Jesus? Faith. Amen? Faith. And dip it in blood that is in the basin and strike it on the lentils of the tor two uh, posts of the uh, with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. Stay under the blood. That's what he's saying, isn't he? Stay under the blood, brothers and sisters. Stay under the blood. Don't leave. Don't leave. Stay under the blood. Oh, I feel his presence. Stay under the blood. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. Notice he's not passing through to smite his people, right? And when he sees the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over that door. Glory to God. And I will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite, to smite you. Isn't that a wonderful promise? Isn't that wonderful? God is going to keep you and I. He's going to protect us. Amen. Not going to let the death angel, not going to let Satan destroy us. If we'll stay under the blood. Got to stay under the blood, brothers and sisters. Amen. Praise God. Now, let's take a look here. And the people bowed the head and worshipped. And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. Amen. And it came to pass at what? At midnight, folks. Let's highlight that. At midnight, the Lord smote all the firstborn of the land of Egypt. When did he do it? At midnight. Midnight speaks of judgment. That's why I say to you, if you're one of those wise virgins that's not going to wake up to the midnight hour, you're not very wise, are you? You're wiser than the foolish, but you're not, not fully wise. Otherwise, you wouldn't be sleeping. Remember the title of the message, The Lord Awakens His Beloved. Remember again the condition that Israel is in, right? Remember how they are to be standing on their feet with their shoes on, with their staffs in their hands, and they are to eat the Passover in haste, in flight. They're leaving Egypt. I mean, no, this is a type of leaving this old world. Amen. And it came to pass at midnight, the Lord smote the firstborn of land of Egypt. 
all the firstborn that was not under the blood, because the firstborn are the Lord's. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on the throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of the cattle. Amen? And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt. How many know at the midnight hour, the Bible says there's a cry. That behold, the bridegroom comes, go out to meet him. At midnight, there's going to be a cry in this whole world like never before. Can you imagine the cry? when the world experiences the church being caught up? Can you imagine the cry in the land when those that weren't ready, when their loved ones are disappearing all over this planet? Can you imagine that cry? It won't just be the firstborn as far as uh, as far as uh, in this earth, it's going to be the firstborn, his firstborn, right? In Christ, in Jesus. Jesus is the firstborn, is he not? And the church is in him. They are considered the firstborn. And because they're under the blood, they're going to escape the judgment of God that is coming upon this earth. But how many know? That there's a first of the first fruits that comes out of the first fruits. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. So, I want you to read the rest of this, brothers and sisters. Uh, I want you to follow the link, and I want you to read this whole chapter. And I want you to see the whole story of how the Egyptians came out of Egypt. Amen. So important. So important. Now, Exodus chapter 19, verse 4. You shall, you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagle wings and brought you unto myself. How did God bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? In haste. What does that word haste mean? Flight. Are you listening? You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagle wings and brought you unto myself. Praise God. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 11. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings, so the Lord alone did lead him, Israel, and there was no strange God with him. Are you listening? God likens the deliverance of Israel from Egypt as a flight. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, as she flutters over her nest, as she shakes the nest with her wings. Are you listening? What is she doing? She's waking them up. It's time to eat. Are you listening? They've been sleeping, those little eagles. But mama's flying in or or even the male eagle flying in 
and is spreading abroad their wings, fluttering over the young. It's time to eat. Dear God, people, you better listen to this preacher. If it's ever been time to eat, it's now. Amen? You look up this Hebrew word. If you look up this Hebrew word, um, let's see, stirreth, I believe it is. Yeah. If you look up this word stirreth in the Hebrew, it means to open the eyes. It means to awaken. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them. Not only is she, or the male eagle or the female eagle, not only are the eagles flying in to feed the eaglets, the young, but also it says that they're going to teach them how to fly, going to teach them how to soar, going to teach them they have some wings. Amen? And so they take the young, they take the eaglet on their wings, and they bear them on their wings, and that is what the Lord is doing with us. He has to make us strong. He has to feed us before we can make this journey or this flight. Notice that the children of Israel ate the Passover. Amen? Before they left that night, they had meat in their bodies. Amen? They had been eating meat, and they were strong. They were eating unleavened bread. Are you listening? They had a meal before they left that night. They weren't weak. They were strong and ready for the journey, ready for the flight. Anybody listening? Song of Solomon. Oh, blessed be his name. My beloved spake and said unto me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Are you listening? For lo, the winter is past, and the rain is over and gone, and the flowers appear on the earth, and the time of the singing of the birds is come. The voice of the turtle is heard in our land. The fig tree putteth forth her green figs, and the vines with her tender grape give a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. He's trying to wake her up, just like the eagle trying to wake up the eaglets. Are you listening, brothers and sisters? Glory to God. Now, take a look at this. The fig tree putteth forth her green figs. Notice that this is connected to arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. See how it's connected? Arise, awake. And it's tied to the fig tree putteth forth her green figs. Now, take a look at what Jesus said right along with this verse. Matthew 24, verse 32, verse through verse 33. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Do you see what the Lord's saying? Time to wake up. Amen? Time to wake up. The Lord is stirring us, brothers and sisters. Praise God. When the fig tree putteth forth its leaves, 
you know that summer is nigh. How many know there's a difference between spring and summer? I hope you know that. It's no longer springtime when Jesus is speaking of the end of the world. Are you listening? When Jesus tells the disciples about the end of the world and the sign of his coming, He's not speaking of spring anymore. He's speaking of summer is coming. Summer is approaching the wrath of God. Are you listening? The day of the Lord. Matthew or Mark, excuse me, Mark chapter 13, verse 28 and through uh, to 29. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branch is yet tender, put it forth leaves. You know that summer is near. So ye in like manner, when you shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh even at the doors. Without question, Jesus is referring to the book of Song of Solomon. He is absolutely referring to the book of Song of Solomon. And remember, in the same context, in Song of Solomon, it says, Arise, my love, right? Arise, my love, and come away. It's time to take your flight. Are you listening? Let's take a look at Luke. And when these things begin to come to pass, Luke 21, 28 through 36. When these things begin to come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draws nigh. Isn't that interesting? That looks a lot like the children of Israel the night they were delivered and took their flight out of Egypt. Notice they're on their feet, right? He said, look up. Straighten up, stand up, lift up your heads. Your redemption's drawing near. And he spake, what? A parable of the fig tree. When they now shoot forth, you know of your own selves that summer is nigh at hand. See how Jesus tied this together with the redemption? Oh, yeah. When they now shoot forth, you see and know of your own selves that summer is nigh at hand. He's warning that judgment is coming. He's warning that his wrath is coming. So, likewise, so, likewise, ye, when you see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all is fulfilled. What generation is he speaking of? This, this, this generation that we're in right now shall not pass away till all is fulfilled. Amen. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And take heed to yourselves, lest any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, drunkenness, and the cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. As we've been preaching to you, it's coming as a snare. Amen. Upon where? the whole face of the earth. The whole face of the earth. So what does he say? Go to sleep. Take your rest. Watch! That's what he says. Wake up. Do you see Jesus like the eagle? So the Lord. Do you see him? He's fluttering over them. 
Watch ye therefore, and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. Can you see Jesus Christ? Can you see him? Can you see Jesus like an eagle fluttering over your life right now? Can you? He's trying to awaken you. It's time to eat. It's time to learn how to fly. It's learn it's time to learn how to soar. See, very important for us to understand Jesus is trying to wake us up. Jesus is trying to get you and I to grow up and wake up, grow up. Amen. He's warning us. Judgment's coming. His wrath is coming. Amen. Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 3 through 5. His left hand should be under my head, and his right hand should embrace me. What's that a picture of? He's carrying her. Are you listening? Remember, it means to take flight. How does the Lord carry you and I? With his wings. Amen? Praise God with his right hand and with his left. He embraces us. He carries us. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that you stir not up nor awake my love until he please. Who is this that cometh out of the wilderness leaning upon her beloved? She's coming out of the wilderness. She's not coming out of Egypt. And she's not going into the wilderness. She's headed into the promised land. Anybody listening? I hope you're listening. The church is not in this condition today. The church as a whole is headed into the wilderness. They're still leaving Egypt. Sad. Still in Egypt with the blood over their doors. Are you listening? Haven't even eaten the lamb, most of them. Sad. Yeah, they got the blood over their doors. They're saved, but they're not partaking of his divine nature. They're not eating of the lamb. They're not getting strong. They're not standing up. They don't have their shoes on their feet, their loins girded about. Amen. They don't have their staffs in their hands. They're not ready to go. The church today is not ready for for flight. But we see here that she is being carried by her beloved up out of the wilderness. Praise God. Glory to the Lamb, people. Who is this that cometh up from the wilderness leaning upon her beloved? Glory to God. I raise thee up under the apple tree. There thy mother brought thee forth. There she brought thee forth that bare thee. That word raised in the Hebrew That word raised means to wake up, awaken. I awoke you under the apple tree. There thy mother brought thee forth. There she brought thee forth that bare thee. Oh, listen, dear God. Apple tree has to do with his love. Nothing will wake you up like the love of God. Amen. The church today does not know the love of God. Sad. I think this is uh, John. Yeah. John 21 verse 18. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, 
when thou was young, speaking to Peter, Jesus is speaking to Peter, when thou was young, thou girdest thyself and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and what? Carry thee, whither thou wouldest not. Carry thee. Are you listening, people? Jesus is telling Peter, you're not going to be able to go where you need to if I don't carry you. Just like the eagle, so the Lord. Amen. Dear God, people, can you hear what the Lord is saying? It's the same thing that's being said in Revelation 12, 5. She brought forth a man-child. Amen. The church today is bearing a child. It's going to bring forth a man-child who is to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And what? This child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Are you ready to take your flight? Are you ready to leave Egypt? Are you ready to leave this whole world? Are you ready to leave it all behind, folks? If you're still in Egypt, you are in trouble. But if you're in the wilderness, amen, it's one thing to be in Egypt and be saved. It's another thing to be in the wilderness and hadn't left, you left Egypt but you still got some Egypt in you. God has to sanctify and get that Egypt out, right? But brothers and sisters, <clears throat> she, his beloved, is not in Egypt. She's in the wilderness. And he's carrying her up out of the wilderness into not the promised land in the Old Testament, but into heaven itself. Praise the Lord. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman, which what? Brought forth the man child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. I don't think I need to tell you what that means anymore, do I? Do I need to explain to you what that means? The church is going to get their wings. They don't have their wings right now. They're not ready for flight. When a pilot in the Air Force is ready to fly, they get their wings. Amen? The bride has her wings. She's ready for flight. But the church is not going to be ready for flight until the middle of the tribulation hour. She's going into the wilderness. Are you listening? In fact, she flees into the wilderness. She's ready to leave Egypt now. She's running. Are you listening? She's running from Egypt. She's running from the devil. She's running from everything she can so that she can be ready for flight. Amen. She doesn't want anything to do with the world. She wants nothing to do with sin or Satan. Amen. She is ready to leave. She doesn't want to stick around anymore. See, the church today is too comfortable. The world has become a very comfortable place for the church. Just like those little eaglets in the nest. Amen. They need to be stirred up. They need to be awoken. Get out of their comfort zone. Did you know that the mother eagle, the eagles will actually tear out the downy feathers and rip out the bottom of the nest so that those little eaglets can't sleep? Are you listening? And if God has to, he'll start tearing up your nest. Amen. That's called your home. If he has to, he'll shake you. 
He'll shake your home. He'll shake your whole life to wake you up. The church is going to experience persecution. Do you see it, folks? Persecuted the woman. Who is it that's persecuting the church? The dragon. The dragon. Amen. If the Lord's got to, folks, he will flutter over you to the point where you will be so shaken. If he has to, he'll shake you right out of the nest. Don't get too comfortable in this old world. Amen. Why? What is, what is mama doing? What, what, what's going on here? This was so comfortable. All of a sudden, the bottom falls out, and you're free-falling. Amen? Don't worry, she'll catch you. Don't worry, he'll catch you. One of them will. Amen? But if you don't learn how to fly, they say that the eagle will eventually let that eaglet hit the ground. Amen? And let it die. Why? Because if it can't fly, the enemy's going to destroy it. Are you listening? What good would it be for that eagle to live and be on the rock? Because every eagle has a rock. What would it be? What good would that be if the eagle can't fly? Amen. Praise God. There's a lot of folks in this hour falling away. And God's just going to let you fall away. If that's what you want. Amen. If you don't want to serve him, he's not going to force you. He will let you crash. And even burn. Are you listening? Listen, folks, God, I'm telling you, this is, I believe this is from the Holy Ghost right now. God doesn't want to tear up your home. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to shake up your home. He doesn't want to shake up your nest. He doesn't want to do that. But if he has to, he will. He will do it. He'll begin tearing at your home, your nest. Because he's more concerned about your soul than he is about your comfort in this world. And if you understood what he's doing, you'd thank him. You'd appreciate it when you understand your soul is going to spend eternity in hell if he doesn't wake you up. Amen. If he does not wake you up, you will burn in hell in the lake of fire forever. You don't think God will go to those lengths? You don't think he'll take those measures to even allow your home to be tore up? To let your nest be tore up? As the eagle, so the Lord. As the eagle, so the Lord. If you won't wake up, God's going to allow persecution. Amen. How many know persecution's coming? Great persecution is coming to America. Amen. And God's going to allow it if you won't wake up. Amen? The church is going to experience persecution. And she's going to flee into the wilderness where she has a place prepared for her for three and a half years from the face of the serpent. Amen. Praise God. I'm trying to help some folks wake up. Amen. 
Praise God. I want to encourage you again. Click on the link in this video. Get these verses of Scripture. Study them. Amen? Print them out. Use them. Dear God, brothers and sisters, we better study now. You see here, the church is going to be nursed for three and a half years after his beloved is caught up unto God and to his throne. Notice this woman, she flees into the wilderness under persecution after she gives birth to the man-child. Amen. Dear God, people, arise. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. In the name of Jesus.